I once heard the forest described like an ocean. Most people, average people, just dabble on the shoreline. But those who truly feel the force go out for a swim. The individuals that serve the light side of the force, their strength comes from their endurance. They swim out basking in the sun's light, and the longer they tread water, the further they paddle, the more powerful they become. But there will always be the call of the depths below, beckoning those who swim down into the darkness. There is immense power to be found here, not from endurance nor patience, but by simply giving in to gravity and seeing just how far down you can sink until the pressure crushes you. This is the allure of the dark side, obtainable, seductive power that lures you in and destroys everything that makes you sentient. Make no mistake, here there be monsters. 20,000 years ago, a collection of Jedi wanted to tap into the power of the dark side. Details about this time are sketchy to say the least, as one might expect for a war taking place 20 millennia ago, but let's just say that it went poorly for the dark side. And while the specifics about the war have been lost to time, the memory lived on in many an aspirational Jedi until the second schism took place about 4,000 years ago, when a Jedi master named Ajunta Paul discovered that he could use the Force to not just restore life, but to shape it to mold and twist it into any figure he desired. But when the Jedi Council discovered what Ajunta and his colleagues had done, they were horrified. They knew that this corruption of life itself could only be the work of the dark side. They ordered their research to stop, but Ajunta and his followers did not listen. They wanted to see just how far deep into the ocean they could sink before it destroyed them, and they would not give up their power so easily. Master Paul and his rogue Jedi waged a terrible war. They used their power to raise an army of abominations, from shambling hordes of zombies to enormous, life-consuming leviathan superweapons. The Dark Jedi used every ounce of their newfound power in their attempt to destroy their Jedi oppressors. It was not enough. After a hundred years of darkness, the Jedi cornered Ajunta Paul's remaining legions on Corbos. Though they made a valiant last stand, they were overwhelmed and defeated. But instead of putting the renegades to the sword, the Jedi showed mercy, banishing Master Paul and his followers out of Republic space and into the unknown regions. This single act of leniency is now responsible for trillions of deaths across thousands of worlds. The exiled Dark Jedi eventually arrived at a planet known as Korriban. Here, the primitive Sith natives greeted them as gods from the sky, the planet itself and its inhabitants were naturally attuned to the dark side, making it the perfect place for Paul's exiles to found their new empire and take on the titles as Dark Lords of the Sith. Here they formally established what it meant to be a Sith, taking inspiration from the brutal planet they occupied and wanting to spit in the face of the Jedi Code, they established their own philosophy. Peace is a lie, there is only passion, through passion I gain strength. Through strength I gain power, through power I gain victory, and through victory my chains are broken. The Force shall free me. Under this philosophy of individualistic, power-grabbing hedonism, and living well beyond the Republic and Jedi's gaze, the Empire expanded into the Outer Rim territories, biding their time and rallying their forces under a dark martial law until they could one day return and seek vengeance against those who had cast them out. Many times the Sith have returned in one form or another in pursuit of retribution, but these were often splintered affairs. A political faction within the Empire seeking glory and power by lashing out at their old Jedi foes, or a few fallen Jedi using Sith teachings to incite a civil war. It has not been until recent years that the Republic has truly understood the magnitude of what the Sith have been up to out there on the edge of space. Perhaps we should have seen it coming, but, well... Who expects a strike from a foe that was defeated thousands of years in the past? Certainly not us. And when they did return in force, they did so with the strength of a wrecking ball, smashing into the galaxy, shattering countless worlds, and scattering the Jedi Order back into their furthest enclaves. For a time, they even managed to occupy Coruscant and hold it hostage until the Republic came to the negotiating table. Now the balance of power rests precariously on a knife's edge, with both sides rallying across a thousand worlds to tip the advantage in their favor in a war that the Sith Empire has been preparing for generations. But the beast has cracks in its armor. 
the 12 members of the Dark Council of the Sith rule with an iron fist. Their non-Force-sensitive servants are severely lacking in free will and will often follow suicidal orders to their deaths rather than defy their masters. And on the other end of the spectrum, the lords of the Sith are barbarically opportunistic. By their own philosophy, power is to be grasped at all costs, even if it means treason. You can always count on the Sith to betray each other and set aside the Empire's overarching goals in favor of their own ambition. These weaknesses of rigidity and treachery are merely the symptoms of the Sith disease. They rule through fear and oppression, and as long as they do, there will always be brave souls who will rise up against them. The Republic will prevail against this old adversary, and we will teach them the same lessons that we taught their ancestors all those years ago. And this time, we won't make the mistake of clemency. Stay safe out there. Signing off.